wanted to speak. Oh, I just lost the score. I want to speak to you tonight about uh, creating some maps around who, what, where, and when using geolocated tweets. Now, broadly speaking, there are two types of geolocated tweets. There's those with implied location and those with an explicit location. Now, as Brady mentioned, I work on a site called transmap.com, uh, and for that, we primarily use the. This slide's not moving on now. There we go. We use the location field that people put into their profile when they sign up to Twitter. The 30 character field, we geocode that, and that allows us to work out where someone is most of the time. Um, we use this primarily because it's a larger source of location uh, available from tweets. So about 40% of the time we can locate someone uh, down a city level or greater. Um, that means we can generate trends. You can see there on a map from global level all the way, all the way down to the city level. This sort of data is great for generating dynamic uh, visualizations um, or dynamic uh, visualizations of content that fast moves and this video is not playing bother. Um, what you would be seeing is um, a visualization of uh, the hash flags uh, about people talking about the World Cup last year. But to delve any further, we really need to have greater accuracy and resolution in the tweets. And it was about 18 months ago that Twitter first started uh, allowing people to attach precise coordinates um, to their tweets. And despite privacy concerns, uh, a lot of people have started to do this. Um, and it's just got to the point now where you can start to do some interesting um, things with this data. And this here is a visualization of well, it gives you some idea of the data. It's taken about two million of these points over the last year from around the, the Bay Area uh, and plotted them as a heat map. It's from about uh, 56,000 different users um, across that time. Here you can see um, closer into downtown San Francisco, the bright spot down the bottom left is the San Francisco University. Downtown, the, the really hot spot up the top and the, the darker area is typically where the parks are. Looking more closely at downtown, uh, you can see the hotspot around Market Street. One of the interesting points there is just off uh, Market Street, Folsom Street, the, one of the hottest spots is actually uh, Twitter's headquarters, probably one of the, the hottest geo-tweeting spots in the world. I'm amazed at the resolution of this data can provide. Um, this little critter is actually San Francisco Airport. The legs are the gates, the abdomen and the entrance hall, and as soon as Terminal 2, Terminal 2 starts to see a bit of traffic, you'll see some pincers form there. Every city has a unique fingerprint, and some of them are actually very beautiful. Um, London is what you're seeing on the left there, the spider's web looking one. The one on the right is actually New York, and Manhattan, you can see Central Park, the, the darker spot in the middle there. Now this data can also be, be obviously sliced by time, um, and this, if you were seeing it, probably would be uh, showing you the tweets over, over time so that you can actually get a picture of how people use different parts of the city at different times of the day. But the real power of these tweets is what you get beyond the where and the when. It's the, the what and the who that the context of the tweets give you. And this here is a, uh, a topical map created using the, the uh, simple filtering and, and categorization of the tweets to create a, a picture of the transportation around the Bay Area, ranging from the Caltrain, the BART, right the way down to the cable car um, that I'm sure many a tourist has tweeted from or locals complaining about the noise. We can do other anal analysis, for example, ha making a good guess as to the gender of the person tweeting. Uh, in this case, you use the first, the first name of the, the people tweeting, and then I've done a, a calculation to work out which gender dominates particular areas. Um, you can see here that north of the bay tends to be more dominated by the females as well as in San Jose bit of a mix around, around San Francisco and south of the bay dominated primarily by the males. This can also be split up by individuals. So each colour here represents one of the ten top different geotweeters from around the bay area. Each person having a very different fingerprint geographically across the area. We can also split out one of those individuals. This here is actually Robert Scoble's uh, fingerprint from across the bay area categorised by six hour intervals. So you can see typically where he is at different parts of the day across the Bay Area. There's a lot more that you can do with this data. Um, sentiment analysis is one. You can use it to find out where the, the happy and the sad parts are, are of a city. Uh, it can be used for hyperlocal marketing, advertising uh, around a city. Uh, and 
as this data grows, it's going to become more and more important in disaster and emergency response situations to be able to get precise data about where someone is and what they're saying. Thank you.